Welcome back. In this video, we're going to do a little review of the Pythagorean Theorem and the Distance Formula. And we're going to apply this to some of the things that we've been using in algebra class. So, the Pythagorean Theorem is the theorem that we use to help us find the length of the side of a right triangle. Uh, a right triangle is denoted with a right angle and the side opposite the right angle is known as the hypotenuse. And the other two sides are the legs. Well, the Pythagorean theorem tells us that the length of one leg squared plus the length of the other leg squared equals the length of the hypotenuse squared. So, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Or, as you probably remember, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but you got to know what a, b, and c are. So, if a is one of the legs and b is one of the legs, then c is the hypotenuse. And sure enough, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared for our Pythagorean theorem. So, we could apply this to uh, right triangles. So, we might have a right triangle with legs of 14 and 8, and our Pythagorean theorem would tell us that leg squared, 8 squared, plus leg squared, 14 squared, equals the length of our hypotenuse squared. Well, you may have learned in geometry that you can reduce these triangles by the same factor. So 8 is 4 times 2, and 14 is 7 times 2. So if we're going to reduce these by a factor of 2, or split it into 4 times 2 and 7 times 2, we're going to do our Pythagorean theorem, but remember our answer is going to be too small by a factor of 2. So we'll have to remember to multiply back. So our, hypot our hypotenuse will be something times 2. So instead of doing the Pythagorean theorem with 8 and 14, which will work just fine and give us our final answer, we can use 7 and 4. So we can say 4 squared plus 7 squared equals x squared. And that is 16 plus 49 equals x squared. 16 plus 49 is 65. So 65 equals x squared. But we don't want x squared. We want x. So the square root of 65 is equal to x. Now that would be plus and minus radical 65, or the square root of 65. But we don't want a negative side. So x is the square root of 65, but really it's the square root of 65 times 2, or 2 radical 65, or square root of 65. Now we could do the same thing with this triangle. This one's a little bit different. We want to find the length of one of the legs now and not the hypotenuse. So we have to be careful. This isn't going to be 4 squared plus 6 squared equals y squared. It's going to be something else. So we definitely don't want to say 6 squared plus, pardon me, plus 4 squared equals y squared. Okay? We don't want to do that on this problem because we are not looking for the hypotenuse. So this problem would be 4 squared plus y squared equals 6 squared. And I'll leave this for you to solve for y. Uh, some of you guys might have already seen that's 2 times 2 and that's 2 times 3. So that's going to be 2 times something. Okay, so you could use the reduced triangle principle there. A quick review of our Pythagorean triples. These will show up quite often. 
our Pythagorean triples, or our families of right triangles, are integers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. So in our families, the longest side, or the largest side, will always be our hypotenuse. Okay, the hypotenuse is always the longest side in a right triangle. So if we have a family that's 3, 4, 5, that's really saying 3 squared plus 4 squared will equal 5 squared. And sure enough, that does work. 9 plus 16 equals 25. And in the 3, 4, 5 family, that's the same as a 6, 8, 10. Just everything increased by a factor of 2. Or we can increase by a factor of 3. 9, 12, 15. These are all 3, 4, 5 right triangles. In fact, even like 3 halves, 2, 5 halves is a 3, 4, 5. It's, they've just all been divided by a factor of 2. So other families would be the 5, 12, 13. 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. The 7, 24, 25. 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared. And the 8, 15, 17. And again, this multiplying concept still holds. Right? An 8, 15, 17 is still the same thing as a 24, 45, 51, but I've increased each of these by a factor of 3. So this is still the 8, 15, 17 family if I take out my common factor. And then we'll also see some special right triangles that are families but they're not integers and one family is the 45 45 90 family or the isosceles right triangle in which the legs in an isosceles triangle are congruent so we might say they're the same so if we had a triangle that had sides of one legs of one the hypotenuse is going to be the square root of two or x x x radical 2. So even if one of the legs was 5 and the other leg was 5, then we'd know our hypotenuse would become 5 radical 2. So it's that simple. We can make this a little bit tougher if we want by taking the hypotenuse and making that um, an integer or something a little more challenging. And the other family is the 30, 60, 90 family. Okay where the sides of the triangle are 1, square root of 3, and 2. Now keep in mind, the, the side opposite the 90 degree angle, the, the hypotenuse is always the longest side because, well, the right angle is the largest angle in a right triangle. And the smaller side is always opposite the smaller angle. Right? If you think about this as jaws, you know, the the greater this opens up, the greater the angle, the longer the side is going to be. So a 60 degree angle is going to have a larger side associated to it, a larger opposite side than the 30 degree angle. Since the 30 degree angles are smallest side, our angle, our side opposite will be the smallest side. Side opposite the 60 will be the medium and this will be the large. And that particular family, to get to my point, is the 30, 60, 90, is really the 1 square root of 3, 2, or x, x radical 3, 2x. So the neat thing about a 30, 60, 90, if you know it's a 30, 60, 90, okay, we have something like this, and the side opposite the 30 is 10, well, that's our x side. If the side opposite the 60 is x radical 3, okay, x radical 3, well, if x is 10, then that must be 10 radical 3. And if the hypotenuse is 2x, side opposite the 90 is 2x. And if x is 10, that side must be 20. And I'll see you in class.